Hey guys, what the hell am I doing? So I bought a brand new internal hard drive, Seagate Barracuda 3.5 inch, 1 terabyte, um, 7200 RPM, 64 megabyte cache. I bought it on Tiger Direct the other day because I thought I needed some more storage, backup capability, and because I'm, you know, honestly a hardware junkie and I just wanted to buy something new and put in my computer. But I thought this would also be a good chance to show you the guts of what I use on a day-to-day -day basis. So I built this actually around Thanksgiving last year, 2011, during all the Black Friday sales. I got incredible deals on everything. Um, so the motherboard is a Gigabyte GAZ68 APD3, two PCI Express Time 16 Crossfire capable, uh, no SLI, so I've got a, uh, a Radeon set up here. Um, sports RAID, it's got two SATA 3 headers, two SATA 2, and uh, two USB 3.0s and a whole crap load of USB 2.0 capability. Uh, for the processor, I have a Intel Core i5-2500K, which just means it's unlocked for overclockers. I have no idea why you would want to do that, but people do. Um, and it's 3.3 gigahertz. Uh, we've got for RAM, I've got 2 by 4 gigabyte. Uh, crucial 8 gigabyte total um, just your standard RAM nothing fancy there um, Sapphire Radeon HD 6870 uh, 1 gigabyte 256 bit PCI Express 2.1 times 16 um, it's got Crossfire support so I actually built this rig with upgradability in mind I'll pr probably do Crossfire in the future once uh, the video card price comes down in another couple years and it's got 1 by HDMI output on the back and 2 by DVI and actually that came with Deus Ex which was pretty cool. Um, for my hard drive I've got a Western Digital uh, Caviar Blue 500 gigabit byte SATA 2 60 megabyte cache that's what I've been using uh, for my bulk storage and then down at the bottom which just screws into the bottom <laughs> of the case which is actually really cool at least I think so is an Intel 160 gigabit um, Solid state drive, SATA 2, not SATA 3, SATA 2, but I got a really good deal on it, so uh, it's perfectly fast for me. I'm very happy with it. My power supply, which is very interesting, but it is a very good power supply, Antec 620 watt continuous power. Um, DVD burner, dot dot dot. And the, as far as the case goes, it is a Rosewill Future Gaming ATX Mid Tower computer case. Um, it comes with four fans, one there. One there, and two here. Um, I guess I should be pointing rather than doing that. And um, it has, uh, it's got good cable management, it's big. It's got tons of ventilation up there, back here, here, in the bottom. Um, so we kind of get a lot of airflow, and my rig never really gets that hot, and that's very important. And then for operating system, I have Windows 7 Home Premium 64-bit. So, but today, what I'm gonna be doing is installing my fancy new hard drive. It's actually, I guess, not too fancy. It's not a solid state drive or anything. But um, this is not only, I guess this will be kind of a tutorial on how to install a hard drive. I'm definitely going to have to edit this because the cable management is not interesting at all. So the first things first, uh, it's very important to have a anti-static wrist strap. If you don't have one, yeah, you gotta get one. I mean, you can't be touching the inside of your computer with that one. At the very least, you gotta make sure you're not on carpet, I'm on hardwood, wearing, not wearing socks, I'm in my bare feet. And actually, if you do open up your computer, it's a really good time to just check and make sure all the connections are still good and to dust off uh, as much as you can because dust is a constant enemy for computers. Alright, so I've got my SATA cable. Um, I actually had my old hard drive plugged into the SATA 3. Um, I've got my SSD in there already, even though it's SATA 2, you know, what the hell. Um, but I moved my SATA cable from my old hard drive, which is SATA 2, into the blue uh, SATA 2 slot. So now I've got a free SATA 6, or SATA 3 for my 6 gigabit, gigabit per second hard drive. Now, hard drives don't really actually get above SATA 2 speeds, but just because it makes me feel better, I'm going to plug it into that one. So the way I'm going to do that, apparently I actually had two SATA 2 cables. Uh, with me. I'm going to plug it into the uh, right on top of that that red one. So let me switch hands with the camera. 
and get it in there somehow. This being a live commentary, I am 100% going to swear. That means I'm going to, you know what, I'm just going to stop and plug it in. Alright, well I've got the cables sorted out. I put one, the one end of the SATA cable here, routed it through the back of the, uh, the case, and it's coming out here. So the hard drive is going to go in this space. I actually wanted it to go down here, because you'll notice um, my graphics card is here. And I didn't want to obstruct the airflow going across here, because the graphics card gets super hot. That's why there's this copper <laughs> piping in there to dump all the heat out of it, because it runs so hot. Um, but the way I configured my computer to begin with, there's no available power cords down here. So unless I want to recable anything, everything, and I sure as hell don't, I'm going to put it up here. So that's what I'm going to do. So the next step is to put the 3.5 inch hard drive screws into the side of the hard drive. Um, I've got a screwless, um, uh, whatever it's called, um, hard drive enclosure, uh, component enclosure up here. But uh, again, I didn't do the cabling very effectively, and so I've got to put it down here. Now these are the easy kind. The actually hard drive is just going to slide in there. But I've got to put the hard drive, uh, the screws on the hard drive. And the important thing to know when you do that is never let this thing touch anything but the static paper it comes with, and your hands and the computer case. Don't put it on the floor. Don't put it especially um, straight onto the box because static kills in computers. Alright, so now I've got the screws in the side of this thing, and I'm going to slide it into place. Uh, I'm going to slide it into place one way or another. See, I've got to hold the camera with my hand, which is a real pain in the ass, because I don't have like one of those gorilla stands or whatever they're called. But I'm going to make sure that the connector is on the right side. Um, all my connectors, the cables are on the other side, so I just want to make sure I don't screw that up when I'm doing this. And all right, so it's in. Um, all I had to do was force it. My dad always told me, never force it, you'll break it. Well, here's a good example of forcing it sometimes works. Um, so I got my terabyte drive and my half terabyte drive. How cool is that, by the way? All right, now welcome to the less inspiring other side of my computer case. Uh, this is where a lot of the cables are routed, um, but you'll see here, my terabyte, a new one, half terabyte, or 500 gig. Uh, what I'm going to do is plug this power supply cord into the back of it and the SATA cable into the back of it. So power supply goes here, SATA goes here. SATA I could probably do while holding the camera, but you know what? How interesting is that? Well, that was easy. Um, power cables tend to be a little harder because they have a lot of tension to them, or they're very tight, and they don't bend the right way, and uh, well, you know what, it's a good thing because the last thing you want to do is rip the uh, connectors or the wires of your power cable. Alright, so, hard drive's installed, cabling is reinstalled, the last thing you should usually put in uh, or re-cable is the power cord, just because you don't want to accidentally turn on the computer with half the cables unplugged or something half plugged in. So I am going to turn on the computer and see what happens. Remember I also switched that other SATA cable. So I am really curious to see how the computer figures that madness out. I'm expecting something to happen in startup that says, hey, I found something new. Oh, yeah, I just saw something there actually. That's not my usual. Uh, hard drive list. No, I All right, and we've moved on to fraps. So the next step um, is to go to control panel, system and security. This is Windows 7, of course. It's going to be different for other operating systems. Um, then you go to, where is it, administrative tools, create and format hard disk partitions, Let's see if it thinks it exists. You must initialize a disk before Local Disk Manager can access it. Um, it gives you this. This is the new disk. Um, and what it's going to 
ask you is what partition style you want to use. Um, MBR, master boot record, or GPT, GUI partition table. Um, unless you know what these mean, I don't. Well, I mean, I sort of do, but you know, I don't really know what it means. Use the master boot record. That's very standard. All right, so one important step is if your hard drive is not recognized by Windows, you may have to go into the BIOS um, software on your motherboard, which you access uh, when you first turn the computer on, when it's doing all that kind of retro white text, you know, loading things before Windows starts booting up, you got to press a certain key. It's specific to every motherboard. Mine is delete, um, and every one of these BIOS memos looks different. It depends on your motherboard again. Um, so if you do not see the hard drive, you're going to have to go in the BIOS to fix that. It's not hard, but there's plenty of guides on the web that can help you through that. I didn't have this problem, so I'm not going to bother. All right, freak out averted. So here's all the device or hard disks and solid state disks that it already recognizes. This is my SSD. Um, this is how it's partitioned. Um, here's my 500 gigabyte hard drive. There is just the system reserves. Um, but if I click on, as you see, I can scroll down. I can expand this. Hello, I can see all of you now. Um, welcome to the party. Oh no, come back. Thank you. So here is my new hard drive. 931.51 um, gigabytes. That's how many gigabytes is actually in a terabyte. Um, and you right click on this new simple volume. It says new simple volume wizard. Okay. Click next. Um, that looks good. Choose a volume size that is between maximum and minimum. Well, I only want one partition. I don't want multiple, so I hit next. What letter should we choose? How this is the age old question. I put H for R drive, uh for my other hard drive. For this one I think I'm gonna go with T for terabyte. I kinda like that, don't you? I don't care if you don't, because I do. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um NTFS file system is what you would want unless you know what you're doing. Um it's gonna have to format some hard drives come pre formatted. Most don't. I go at mine um, just uh, OEM, original equipment manufacturer, which means it doesn't come with anything, so you need all the parts. I wouldn't change any of this stuff. Um, volume label. So that actually didn't take long at all. Um, so we're going to go make sure that worked. Computer, and there's my new drive. Terra, the volume label I put in, T colon, and there is absolutely nothing in it. That is absolutely gorgeous. Um, so that's actually really cool for me because I have over one and a half terabytes of storage space, which is absurd. Um, but my very first computer had 235 megabytes of hard drive space, probably a third of which was taken up by the oh-so-awesome Windows 3.1 and DOS 5.0. Um, so that's it. That's me installing my hard drive. That is how to install a hard drive on a Windows 7 machine. I hope that was useful and somewhat entertaining, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.